Newcastle United, under our new Saudi ownership, have made no secret of their global vision to have a team competing for all the major titles, to have world-class stadium facilities, a world-class training centre and a world-class fan zone. And as Man City at the Etihad are about to build their world-class stadium facilities and fan zone, Newcastle are about to put stack on a metro station car park. So what's going on? Well, in this video, I think I have the answer. It's coming up. Welcome back, it's Eddie here from Tyneside Life. First of all, a couple of little apologies. Uh, first one is I've left me little microphone cable that attaches to me iPhone, so I'm using the native iPhone microphone, so the sound quality might not be as good as what it normally is. Secondly, I'm a little bit late to the party on this fan zone topic. I had other fish to fry with my 10 videos that I put together in the United States summer series. Helen and I had an absolutely amazing time going to these three cities, seeing these three matches, meeting the most amazing people and being part of this overseas Newcastle United community, but also meeting the players at the training session, but also as well meeting again Amanda and Mayor Dad, but also Darren Neils in the Fado pub, and also talking informally in a pub environment with the likes of Lee Marshall and Sarah Matt Metcalf and Matt Willis and Andy who was conducting the fan events. It was an absolute pleasure. Uh, we feel really lucky to be in some small way part of the, the Newcastle United family and community. It was amazing. If you haven't checked out the 10 videos, please check them out, have a look. Uh, I really hope you enjoy them. Speaking of Helen, if you didn't recognise her setting aside a normal day job, Helen has been selling programmes for Newcastle United at St James's Park for the past 13 or 14 years. She currently stands opposite the Strawberry, but sometimes as well she stands at the um, entrance to the Milburn stand as well. So please, she'd love it if you went up and said hello, but also buy a programme from her. Before we get into the fan zone, a couple of little bits of news. This is going to be the last year for Castor. The club are clearly fed up with all the problems and issues they've been facing with Castor in terms of sizing problems, delivery problems, quality issues, not least because of the stitching and the double T, but also the Champions League badges coming off and the fact there was no merch being sent across to the United States where they could have made a killing over there. So the club have had enough. This is the last year and there's going to be a tender put out to other manufacturers to see who's going to be our next um, shirt manufacturer. I think the, for, the forerunner is probably going to be Adidas, but we're just going to have to wait and see. Second bit of hot news at the moment is clearly the membership scheme and the balloting for upcoming matches. It's not a, a topic I really want to get involved with. It, I can appreciate and see from both sides how this is really complex with, I don't know how many tens of thousands of people who have bought into a membership scheme at £37 a pop. Initially, uh, the ballot would um, randomly select a seat that could be anywhere from £45 or something to £74. So you could end up paying for a ticket that you really can't afford. Uh, it's been announced this morning that that's uh, by Darren Neils that they're tweaking that system whereby you can select a pricing layer. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think most people will probably go for the lower pricing bracket. That means you've probably got a significantly less chance of getting a ticket. I can't see a fair way of doing this. All I can say to anybody who's trying to get into St James's Park to see a match, good luck. Anyway, let's get back onto the topic of the fan zone. Of course, we all know back in February, Newcastle United owners bought back the long-term lease on Strawberry Place. It's all been part of everything they've been saying for a long time now about creating this global vision for Newcastle United, a global brand and creating world-class facilities and on the back of the video they released on their own website in partnership with Seller about promoting that global image. So I created two videos expressing what I believe the new fan zone area would look like and in the one I did three or four weeks ago I said that it's going to look nothing like Stack. Of course what happens a week ago Newcastle United have announced that in partnership with Seller they're going to work with Stack to put a fan zone in Strawberry Place. Don't I look like an idiot? Now, before you're tempted to unleash some unfair criticism towards us, there's a wider perspective I, th perspective I think you really need to understand. Because the club's talking about global vision, global brand, world-class facilities, and then we're putting stack on a car park? Really? Now look, don't get us wrong, I love stack. Don't believe us? If you look on my playlist on the history and culture on my channel, I've done three 
possibly four videos about stack in Newcastle and, am, and I'm on record saying more than once I love stack I think it's a great social environment and of course we in Newcastle don't have a fan zone at the minute so to have a double level stack on a car park next to the metro in Strawberry Place with a central stage area is a huge upgrade for us and it'll be absolutely brilliant and as I said in the video that I did it's not just for fans on fan day 25 days out of the year this is a facility that's going to be used leisure and entertainment facilities for families every day all year round not only that it's going to provide employment opportunities working in partnership with the Newcastle United Foundation employability scheme the NU futures it's going to be helping to support and develop young people into work so on that point of view it's excellent as well but also helping to support local businesses in the area where they'll be able to put vendors on the car park next to the strawberry so all in all lots of ticks in the boxes but is this stack facility fan zone newcastle united's answer and seller's answer to a global vision to world-class facilities to answer that let's have a little look at man city now when i did my two videos about the potential world-class fan zone area here in strawberry place i did have one eye in what man city are doing because it's no secret as well that amanda Stavely and Med Agadusi are huge admirers of what's going on at Man City and the Etihad in relation to the stadium, their fan zone, but also their training facilities. So what are Man City doing? Well, after a five month consultation period, they're about to launch into a 300 million pound infrastructure program that's gonna expand their North Stand by 7,700 seats, increasing their capacity to around about 62,000. That particular infrastructure is also going to have a huge skywalk but also a fine attraction facility on top of the stand. It's going to have a 400 bedroom hotel, a commercial section and two huge four storey high LED screens and an all weather fan zone with a capacity for up to 3000 fans covered by a steel and glass canopy. It's going to be ready for the 25-26 season. Now that is a world-class vision and world-class ambition that Newcastle United owners need to match. And I believe that's where we're heading and that's why I believe they've only went for a three-year facility with Stack. Why three years? I think it's because there's been some negotiation with Stack. Newcastle United might have wanted a little bit less than that. Stack might have said, hold on, we want a minimum of a four-year contract. They probably entered into negotiation and agreed on a minimum of three years. So Newcastle United will be tied into that. Because also when you start talking about huge, big infrastructure like that, it takes a long time, even longer than I probably thought was gonna be required. Take, for example, the, the, um, the project that's currently ongoing at Pilgrim's Quarter, coincidentally owned by the Rubin Brothers, where the HMRC staff are gonna be moving into from start from the consultation process to finishing in 27, 2027, you're looking at five or six years. And that's an area of land not too dissimilar to the size of Strawberry Place. Clearly, Newcastle United aren't in a position to start acting on huger, uh, more ambitious plans like the ones that Man City are doing. Plus, we have the added complications of a metro station and a metro tunnel sitting 40, 50 meters behind here. So that's gonna take a lot longer to discuss and to plan, and probably a lot more money to build. Clearly, Newcastle United owners know exactly what they're gonna be doing with this land after three years, but they need a bit of time. It is gonna take a long time to plan, to build something that's gonna be similar on scale to what Man City are doing at the Etihad. So was I a bit premature and stupid to suggest that Newcastle's fan zone wouldn't look like stack? Yes, of course. But I don't think I'm wrong by any stretch about the vision that I've described of what I think Newcastle United have planned to build here long term in terms of a huge expand cantilever expansion of the Gallagher End, incorporating some fantastic superstructure which incorporates a fan zone. I absolutely believe that that's going to happen. And if it isn't, and it turns out the long term plans is to have some sort of stack on a car park here in Strawberry Place, then the owners of Newcastle United are massively overselling and under delivering by a country mile. And I just don't believe 
that's the case.